We are reading the one and only Ivan and we are on page 180. Go ahead and get your book out and turn to that page. Going nowhere. I watched Ruby plod around the ring in endless circles going nowhere. More visitors have been coming, but not many. Max says Ruby's not picking up the slack after all. He says he's cutting back on our food. He says he's turning off the heat at night to save money. Ruby looks thinner to me, more wrinkled than Stella ever was. Do you think Ruby's eating enough? I asked Bob. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, though. You're sure as heck painting enough. Bob wrinkles his nose. That stench is unbelievable, and I found yellow paint in my tail this morning. Bob isn't happy about my night painting. He says it's unnatural. Now, while I work at my art, Bob sleeps on not tag. He claims he prefers her because she doesn't snore. He says her belly doesn't rise and fall and make him seasick. What's this plan of yours anyway? Bob asks. If you explained it to me, I could help out. He gnaws at his tail. Maybe I could come up with something that doesn't involve, you know, paint. I can't explain it, I tell him. It's an idea in my head, but I can't get it right. And anyway, I'm almost out of supplies. I should have known I wouldn't have enough. I kick at my tire swing. It's spattered with drops of blue paint. It's a stupid idea. I doubt that, Bob says. Smelly, yes. Stupid, never bad guys. Most of the day I doze. Late in the afternoon, Mac approaches. Bob slips under, not tag. He prefers to keep a low profile around Mac. Mac gaze, Mac's gaze falls on my pool. A corner of one of my paintings is visible. What's that, big guy? He asks. I calmly eat an orange, ignoring him, but my heart is racing. Mac kicks at my plastic pool. Underneath it are all of the paintings. Mac yanks on a piece of paper. It slips out easily, and he doesn't seem to notice the other paintings. The page is striped with green, which is what happens when blue paint and yellow paint get together. It's supposed to be a patch of grass. Not bad. Where'd you get the paint anyway, George's kid? He considers. Hmm, I'll bet I can get 30 for this picture, maybe even 40. Mac turns on my TV. It's a Western. There's a human with a big hat and a small gun. He has a shiny star pinned to his chest. That means he is the sheriff and he will be getting rid of all the bad guys. If this sells quick, I'm getting you some more of that paint, buddy, Mac says. He walks away with my painting, Ruby's painting. For a moment, I imagine what it would feel like to be the sheriff ad. Good news, huh? Bob says when Max out of earshot. Looks like you might be getting some more supplies. I don't want to paint for Mac, I say. I'm painting for Ruby. You can do both, Bob says. You're an artist after all. While I watch the movie, I try to come up with a new hiding place for my paintings. Maybe, I think, I could fold them once they're dry and stuff them into knot tags. It's a long movie. At the end, the sheriff marries the woman who owns the saloon, which is a watering hole for humans, but not horses. It's been a long time since I've seen a Western that was also a romance. I liked that movie, I say to Bob. Too many horses, not enough dogs, he comments. An ad comes on. I don't understand ads. They're not like Westerns where you know who the bad guy is supposed to be. And they're hardly ever romantic, unless the man and the woman are brushing their teeth before they face lick. I watch an ad for an underarm deodorant. How do you know who's who if they don't smell? I ask Bob. Humans reek, Bob replies. They just don't notice because they have incompetent noses. Another ad comes on. I see children and their parents buying tickets just like the tickets Mac sells. They laugh, enjoying their ice cream cones as they walk down a path. They pause to watch two sleepy-eyed cats, huge and striped, dozing in the long grass. Tigers. I know because I saw them on a nature show once. Words flash on the screen, accompanied by a drawing of a red giraffe. 
The giraffe vanishes and I see a human family staring at another kind of family. Elephants, old and young. They're surrounded by rocks and trees and grass and room to wander. It's a wild cage, a zoo. I see where it begins and where it ends, the wall that says you are this and we are that and this is how it will always be. It's not a perfect place. Even in just a few fleeting seconds on my t TV screen, I can see that. A perfect place would not need walls, but it's the place I need. I gaze at the elephants and then I look over at Ruby, small and alone. Before the ad ends, I try to remember every last detail, rocks, trees, tail, tails, trunks. It's the picture I need to paint. Why do you think he needs to paint that picture? What do you think he's going to do with that picture? Imagining. It's different now when I paint. I'm not painting what I see in front of me, a banana, an apple. I'm painting what I see in my head, things that don't exist, at least not yet. Not tag. I pull out not tag stuffing. Carefully, I fill her with my paintings, hiding them so Mac won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on her for a nap. You've killed her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob admits. It's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices that I've used up my paints and paper. Wow, Julia shakes her head. You are one serious artist, Ivan. That's where we're going to end today.